What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. So everybody's talking about bun. Buns on Twitter. Buns on YouTube. Bun is fast. And with typical fashion, I'm always a week late getting to this stuff. And I decided to throw my two cents in. Now there's two camps here. There's a camp that's like, this is exciting. Bun is great. Bun's going the right direction. Bun is fast. And then there's the other camp that's like, we've seen this before. It's just another JavaScript fad. I'm gonna stick to Node.js and we'll let this pan out a bit. Well, I'm kind of on the other side. I'm excited about it. And I have to say, I'm a little bit of a fanboy. I think it's a step in the right direction. I think it's promising and I'm excited to see where it goes. And so what I did was this past week, I opened up the docs, I read about it, I played around with it a little bit. And in this video, I'm gonna present 10 things I really love about it. So let's get started. First things first, you may be like, what's this guy talking about? What is bun? Well, bun is a new JavaScript runtime, package manager, bundler, etc., that aims to be a drop-in replacement for Node.js but a lot faster and with a lot more perks. It says here, develop, test, run, and bundle JavaScript and TypeScript projects all with Bun. Bun is an all-in-one JavaScript runtime and toolkit designed for speed, complete with a bundler, test runner, and Node.js compatible package manager. Now, I probably shouldn't have to go over all of that, Everybody's done a blog post or a video about its speed, about how fast it is. So I'm sure you know about that. I'm sure you know about the surface level of what Bun is. Let me tell you the 10 things I love about it. Number one, there are many native supports available without the need for additional packages. For instance, reading a .env file. It just works without the need for the .env package. How about the fetch API? I don't need to install node fetch. I don't need node mon to watch for changes. It's built in with a watch flag and a hot reload. And I don't need webpack, ES build, jest, etc. It's all there natively. Number two, TypeScript is default. It's a first class citizen, as Bun says. There's no config setup. Bun can directly execute TS and TSX files, just like vanilla JavaScript. And if you import one of these files, Bun internally transpiles it into JavaScript, then we'll execute the file. So literally, if I open up a brand new project and I run bun init dash y, Look at this. I immediately get an index.ts file with the tsconfig.json. And I know there's a big debate going on about TypeScript, but it's awesome. I don't prefer to do JavaScript without it. But if you'd rather not use TypeScript, not a problem. Here I have an index.js file. All I need to do is just do a bun init, package name, entry point is index.js, and it works around that. And I get a jsconfig instead of a tsconfig, and I move about with my JavaScript as normal. Number three, you can use JSX or TSX out the box. A transpiler is baked into the runtime, converting JSX syntax into vanilla JS before execution. There's no dependencies needed. At least that's what Bun said, but then I tried it, and there is actually a dependency needed. Or maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I couldn't get it to work without a Bun add React. So there's an example here. Let's create a file called react.tsx and paste it in. And I get some errors. If I do a bun react.tsx, I get this error that says cannot find module react slash jsx dev runtime. So I had to do a bun add react and then go to my TS config and change the jsx value to react jsx. And once I save that, I go back and I can run it as normal. Hello world. And as for these TypeScript issues, you can install the types react. So I should be able to do bun add d at types react to get those types. And my error is gone and I can use JSX. So it's out the box, but you do need to install react. The docs don't say to do that, but it seems you have to. If you don't, let me know. If I'm doing it wrong, let me know. But the change in the TS config, that's just reading the docs, React JSX. In addition, you'll see down here at the bottom that Bun implements special logging for JSX to make debugging easier. Also, the Bun runtime supports prop punning, which for me is something I love. Now, prop punning just means instead of doing class name equals class name, when you pass props, you can just do class name. If the variable is the same name, you can just type it one time like this, prop punning. All right, number four, Bun implements a set of native, heavily optimized, primarily server-side tasked APIs on the Bun global object. And this is specifically put together by the Bun runtime. I absolutely love this. So these heavily used server-side tasks, Bun's implemented a native, heavily optimized version on the Bun global object. So Bun whatever. Check this out. If you go to bun APIs, you'll see an example with bun.serve, but there's many more. bun.build, bun.file or write. Here's the file IO system. bun listen, there's hash, crypto hasher, bun test, bun env, sleep, which, inspect. There's even a node API for building native add-ons to Node.js. So I like this because it's optimized, it's native, and it's easy to read. Now, number five is largely based off the last one I talked about in that common functionalities like file IO is syntactically nice 
and simple and native. So for instance, let's look at the file IO system. So we can get a file object with bun.file, easy to understand. And from there, we can call file.txt, file.arraybuffer, file.json. And these return a promise, so we use the await command. So if I run this, let me save it and do bun run index.ts. I have my package.json text. I have my package.json as an array buffer and as JSON. I can then check if this file exists with file.exists. It'll return true or false. True. And then there's file.write, which is a flexible API for writing almost anything to disk. Here's some examples. So bun write, we're going to write to this index.html file, the closing HTML tag, or the buffer from that tag, or bun file, or await fetch. So we can fetch some data, and then write it to the index.html file. It's a very flexible API. And to me, it's simple. It's optimized. It's easy to understand. Number six, Express and Node.js HTTPS libraries should work out the box. You can build your API with it. In fact, Bun, like I said earlier, is marked as a Node.js drop-in replacement, though it's still missing some functionalities in this first major release. And it can't quite be perfectly compatible because instead of using Google's V8 engine, it's built using Apple's WebKit engine. But the key here is that it's not trying to reinvent the wheel. I can swap it out, like I can open up a Node project, I can swap it out, or I can build with it normally as I would Node.js, with some qualifications, of course. You can also use it as a package manager instead of NPM, Yarn, or PNPM, and install speeds are claimed to be 17 times faster. So for an example, I would do, down here, I'd do bun add express, and then let me paste in this code, and let me bring in the types. Then I'll do a bun run index.ts, and it's just a simple Express API. And my point is that you can just swap it out. You can use Express, you can build your API with bun. It's nothing new here that you have to do. Number seven is that you can import and require, even in the same file. Remember those errors you used to get when trying to require a package and you had to put in that experimental flag or change some kind of type in the package JSON? Well, bun gets rid of that by supporting both module systems. Like I said, you can even use both of these in the same file if you wanted. So you can import and you can require no errors, no further configuration. Number eight, hot reloading. If you pass the hot flag, you get hot reloading, which reloads your code without terminating the old process. HTTP and WebSocket connections don't disconnect and your state isn't lost. Remember, Nodemon hard restarts the entire process. Number nine, there's built-in SQLite. There's no package needed. This is really cool, especially when trying to get dev projects up and running. It's inspired by the better SQLite 3 package, but can query up to three to six times faster. Here's an example. Import the database from bun SQLite. Again, it's on the global object. It's been optimized. Instantiate a new database, which is gonna create this file. You can also do it in memory. And if it's not created, run this flag to create it. Then I can do a DB run to create a table, and then I can run a transaction. So I can prepare, insert into cats, which is my table name, these three cats. So prepare it and then run the transaction. And then finally, I can query the database, getting all the cats with this query statement and then the dot all command, and then log out all cats. Let's see how this works. Bun run index.ts. Cats in our database. Here's the three cats. Up here, you see the mydb.sqlite file. And I can run it again to add the same three cats. And that's awesome. In number 10, it comes with a built-in test runner. It's just compatible. It can be run with bun test. And it gets all the benefits of bun, including the speed in the TypeScript and JSX support. And it claims to be 13 times faster than jest. Now there's many more things we could talk about, like using bun to spin up a Next.js project or a Vite project, or using bun to compile an executable, or using the bun build options which are pretty amazing. But hey, I'm like everybody else. I'm still working through the docs. I'm still toying with it. But those are the 10 things that stood out to me from the get-go. So let me ask you, what are your favorite things about Bun? Which side are you on? Are you optimistic or are you cautious about it? And if you're optimistic, what do you like? Let me know down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing it. And I'll see you in the next video.